Welcome to Technoi channel. If you want to know how to use state in React, then you are in luck because that's what we are going to discuss today. As usual, let's start with an HTML markup with title h1 tag. And I have added React core, React DOM and Babel using script tag for our learning purposes. And the style.css contains darker background color and light text color in it. You can skip this tab. This is completely optional. In the right hand side, you can see trimmed down Chrome preview version with darker theme. You can use default Chrome settings to follow my tutorial. You should be fine. Use the div tag with id root for our React container element where all our children node will be attached. This time we will create a new app.js javascript file where we will write our React code. And I have created a class with name state champion which extends react.component. Now define a render method and return a simple react element with h2 tag. And finally call the render method of react dom, pass state champion element as in first argument and secondly pass reference to the container element with id root using dom api. And in the browser you can see some text generated by react that means our react setup is working fine and we are ready to explore more. Now let's discuss about state. State is a kind of variable where we store some data. But it is both tied up with the component where it is defined. It cannot be accessed outside of the component. There is some special way to update its value. We'll closely examine all of it. Now the best place to put some initialization content for our state is in constructor. Constructor will get executed as soon as a newly instance of the class is created. In our case, when we use state champion component, React will create an instance for us and the constructor will be called. Let's initialize this dot state with empty object to start with. Looks like Rhea didn't like it. It throws error, describing this is not allowed before super. To fix this, make sure you call super method with props as an input parameter, as first set statement in set constructor. This will call React component constructor, which in turn will do all the bulk of the heavy lifting for us. And this dot state in React is represented by a JavaScript object. In this case, we have set a default values for name and city fields. Now coming into the render method, wrap the h2 tag inside division as we would like to create few more children element inside it. And returning multiple element is not allowed anyway. So inside p tag, we can access those two fields we just created using curly bracket with dot notation this dot state dot city and this dot state dot name. In the browser, you can able to see both values getting displayed. Now let's pass properties to the component. In this case, we have created message attribute with value welcome. For properties also, using curly bracket syntax and dot notation, we can access the properties values. For example, this dot props dot messages. Now you can able to see welcome state champion got displayed. Before we proceed further, let's talk about the differences between state and properties. So properties is immutable, that means it cannot be changed, whereas state is immutable, which can be changed. And properties are read only inside the component, and values are usually passed from the outside its parent component, whereas state is only accessible inside the component, it is private to the component and which cannot be changed from the outside. And property usually has read-only, has less footprint, so it is much more better performance. Whereas state, there is having some performance issues because React needs to keep track of it, all the struct state changes to optimize its utility. Now let's uh, have discussed about some of the similarity between those two. Both are the plain JavaScript object. Any changes to either of these two can trigger render updates and both are much more deterministic. Now let's deal with a simple array of string and its rendering logic. Assign some default values for the field places 
like Gateway of India, Marine Drive, and Juhu Beach. Now inside render method, create a UL tag for displaying above array contents. We'll use latest ES6 JavaScript features such as map for working with the list items. We'll call this .state.places.map and pass a function inside it. Here we have used error syntax to represent the function. And we are trying to return individual li elements for each item. In this syntax, no need to explicitly specify a return statement. Between li tag, specify item in curly bracket. In the right hand side, you can see the list displayed properly. Looks like we have learned something today. But there are some few small subtleties let's discuss. If you open the inspect tab, notice there is a warning. It complains about unique key to be present. For supplying a key, let's change the signature a bit. Inside the map method, we can access the index as well as, this, as a second argument that we can use as a key and see the warning gone. And if you expand DOM Explorer, we can able to see the UL and LI tag created properly, but there is no key attribute. Key is used internally by React, so it is not displayed on the DOM tree. Keys helps React to identify which items have changed, which are added, and which are removed. Keys should be given to the elements inside the array to give the elements a stable entity. If we would like to access inside DOM, we can create another attribute data-index and pass the index here as well. Now we can see the index values in the DOM explorer. This is not required for the React. Only use index as a key as the last resort. If you don't explicitly specify keys, React will default to using indexes as keys, even though it is giving a warning as we seen earlier. React don't recommend using indexes for keys if the order of the items may change. This can negatively impact performance and may cause issues with component state. Now let's change the string values to a object representation along with id and value fields. The last id we have not changed to see the behavior. Inside map method, earlier item referred to string, now it referred to object. Assign item.id to key and item.value as li content. In the right hand side, we can display list displayed properly. But in the console, React printed a warning complaining about keys should be unique. Now change the ID of the last element of places from 101 to 103 and notice the warning gone. To display the ID values, we can assign item.id to ID attribute and in the DOM explorer, we can see ID values reflected correctly. Now let's go one step backward and create a simple button and use a new onClick attribute. Notice here C is in uppercase. React follow camel case notation, whereas DOM event elements all are in lowercase. One thing to note here, React uses synthetic event system similar to DOM based event. As a React programmer, we deal with the event system exposed by React and it's React responsibility to convert those to native event system. In upcoming videos, I will discuss more on events handling. For now, let's move ahead. Inside onClick method, we pass a reference to the function this.changeCity. There is no parenthesis here, just the function accessed by this. Let's implement changeCity function using error function syntax. And inside the function, let's update the value of city using dot notation. This dot state dot city equals to Delhi. So we should see the city should change from Mumbai to Delhi. Now let's click change city. After clicking the button, nothing happens. No change, neither any error on on the console as well. You cannot update the values of state directly. Only in constructor direct assignment possible. 
you have to use another special method set state for updating values in react notice on clicking the button mumbai changed to pune so here a couple of things we can notice state updates are merged notice the name and places are not impacted by this update to the individual properties level only the city got changed this is known as shallow margin and while updating the states using set state method state method one common mistake the new developer do they try to update the state value inside the render method which is really overkill for the performance because render method will call several times in your execution of your component and one more important thing to remember is time a state value is got changed render method got called however the entire page won't get refreshed only the values change will be get updated so let's duplicate the button and change the handler function to change city to calcutta and let's explore another way to implement the function using normal javascript function style we have created the function function change city to calcutta for this react throws syntax error because the function keyword is not allowed inside a class component now remove the function component and reload now good thing is that error gone using the same syntax as ever let's update city to calcutta on clicking new change city to calcutta button nothing happens and in the console react spits out type error with the message this is undefined this reference is not bounded inside the function so we need to explicitly bind this to the function so if you are interested to use this approach after binding notice mumbai is changed to calcutta and there is no error in the console let's add console.log before and after set state method what do you think about the outputs before maybe mumbai or after maybe pune let's run and see now this is what i see mumbai in both before and after this is one of the common scenario to introduce new bugs actually values changes asynchronously react may base multiple set state calls into a single update for performance reason let's remove the console.log statement and access the previous value of city using the this.state.city it may work some time but results are unpredictable There is a much better alternative to access previous values of state and properties. Inside set state method, instead of passing object, we can also pass method with arrow syntax. Normal function also will work well inside it. It has two arguments, one for state and another one for props. Using dot notation, we can access their respective fields. in the right hand side we can display change values after clicking change city button now let's go back to the list operation let's create another button add places we'll implement another event handler to add new element to the places array first we need to retrieve the current value and then add the new object to it and we can set updated places using set state method we have missed equal symbol let's fix it now all looks good on clicking add place button a new entry is added if you click add place multiple time multiple entry came but in the console there is a error for duplicate key better to avoid using same key for multiple elements with this we would conclude our learning today We shall meet with new tutorial in the future. Thanks for watching. If you like my videos, don't forget to give a thumbs up and please subscribe. Have a good day ahead. Bye bye.